Photoshop, Illustrator, and Procreate. If you're starting out as an Illustrator, these are the only tools you need to learn right now. In this video, I'll tell you why, and then I'll give you some tips on what to focus on when learning each. This video is part two of a series on how to make a living as an illustrator, where I do my best at breaking down the very basic things you need to learn on your way to becoming a successful commercial artist. In part one, we talked about the very beginning basics. Start by knowing your art. If you want to make art for a living, you need to have a pretty good idea of what that looks like. Next, we talked about learning just some basic art skills like drawing and color theory. Today, we're going to move more into some illustration specific skills that you should pick up, starting with the three most common digital tools used by professional illustrators today. In all these videos, my aim is to give you a strong starting point for further exploration on your own. Think of this video as a guide of what to learn rather than a how-to instructional. There are tons of great resources out there for learning more about what we'll be kind of just touching the surface of in this video. And of course, I'm going to be leaving you with some great recommendations for what those next steps, those next classes to take could be. But before we get into it, I just want to welcome you to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Tom Froze. I'm an award-winning illustrator and a top teacher on Skillshare, where I've helped tens of thousands of creative people unlock the world of commercial illustration. It's taken me years of trial and error to figure out how to illustrate for a living, and now I want to share what I've learned with you. This channel is all about giving you insights and inspiration that will help you become a successful commercial illustrator. As always, please be sure to like this video if you find it helpful and subscribe to know when my new videos go live. My last video went up like three or four weeks ago, which is, which is to say my posting schedule can be a little bit unpredictable. So subscribing and hitting that little bell button beside it will ensure you get notified as soon as I post each video. Before we get into the main content, I just have one bit of exciting news. My latest Skillshare class just launched. It's called Printmaking Inspired Illustrations in Photoshop. If you're interested in learning exactly how I build up my illustrations, like I mean exactly how the sausage is made, this class is for you. And it relates perfectly to what I'll be talking about in this video. This class is super fun and super special as it was recorded on Zoom to a live audience and hosted by the folks at Skillshare. It's also super technical and practical. I usually avoid kind of directly teaching my own illustration tools, but in this class I hold nothing back. I show you step by step how I build up an illustration over a sketch and I even share which brushes I use. To start learning how to create printmaking inspired illustrations like mine in Photoshop, please use the link in the video description. If you're new to Skillshare, by using this link, you'll even gain access to two weeks of free premium Skillshare membership to get you started. All right, let's get into it. As mentioned in the last video, we went through the first two steps. That was first knowing your art and then second learning the fundamental art skills. Today we're going to focus on step three, learning the digital tools. So at the top of the video, I spilled all the beans already. I mean, there are three digital tools you need to learn as an illustrator, and that's Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, and also Procreate. The reason I recommend these tools above all others is really simple. They're industry standard. So while today there are definitely alternatives, these still remain the gold standard and they remain too prevalent to ignore. All other apps out there more or less aim to do what these three do best. Now, I realize that the Adobe programs can be too expensive for many. So if shelling out for a monthly Creative Cloud membership is out of the question for you, I recommend checking out Affinity Designer for Vector Illustration and Affinity Photo for Photoshop like capabilities. While I've never used these programs myself, 
I've heard nothing but good things about them, and their one-time sub $100 prices seem pretty hard to beat. As for Procreate, you're not going to find a better deal than $13.99, uh, that's Canadian price, for a one-time purchase. If you already have a Creative Cloud subscription, then you might want to also check out Fresco, which is basically Adobe's answer to Procreate. No additional purchase necessary. If you're a student, you might also want to just look into what kind of special educational discounts Adobe offers for students. I'm pretty sure they have something in that department. It's worth looking into. Price aside, I still recommend sticking with the gold standard. So do what you can to get your hands on the Adobe programs. If you're working on your own, as long as you can send out TIFF and EPS files for raster and vector respectively, you should be okay. But if you're working in teams, say as an illustrator for animation or handing work over to a designer or a production artist to kind of take further and they need to kind of get into the layers and stuff, it just makes sense to work in an industry standard format. While other apps might have some cross compatibility, there are no guarantees and you don't want to find out your client can't use your files at the last moment. Okay, so now let's go through each app in terms of what they do and how they compare to one another. I also describe some key strengths and weaknesses of each. And then after that, we'll go back through them, kind of zooming in closer and focusing on what you should learn and focus on at first. So our first app is Adobe Illustrator. For digital illustration, one of the most popular and useful formats is vector illustration. Vector illustration tends to be flat and graphic and is commonly associated with design, especially for logos and many advertising and packaging type applications. The main functionality in Illustrator is its ability to make precise shapes using the pen tool, as well as being able to manipulate type. If you're a font or custom type designer, you'll build your letter forms in Illustrator. Aside from its clean digital appearance, Vector art is appreciated for being scalable to any size without losing quality or without getting blurry or pixelated at larger sizes. And because of how vector shapes are built up, file sizes are really efficient and they're very small. An image scaled up to the size of a baseball stadium jumbotron, for instance, might be less than one megabyte in size. A very basic example of vector illustration would be a logo. Something more complex would be a fully illustrated scene. You can really actually get quite detailed in Illustrator. In almost all cases, logos must be designed in Illustrator because they need to be scaled up or down all the time and they always need to be crisp. As for illustrators, oftentimes we will be required to submit vector files to our clients, typically in .ai or .eps format. And to do this, we must work in a vector program like Adobe Illustrator. The next app you need to learn is Photoshop. Despite its name, Photoshop is a powerful illustration tool and it's what I use for most of my work. Photoshop excels at creating raster or pixel-based artwork. If you wanna illustrate using digital painting techniques such as with digital brushes in a tablet, or if you want subtle textures or employ collage techniques, Photoshop is the tool you need. Photoshop's main functionality as far as illustration is concerned is in its superior support for digital brushes and in the ability to work in layers. And of course, it's also the most capable Adobe app for any kind of photo or raster editing. Most of my work today is based on raster or pixel-based textures and digital brushes, which simply can't be handled by Illustrator. Often, I also like to incorporate photographic or scan textures and work them into my art. And again, Photoshop's kind of just made to handle this kind of digital composition. You can technically include raster images in illustrations made in Adobe Illustrator, but you can't really make any changes to them. You kind of have to bring them back into Photoshop if you want to make any like pixel level edits to your raster elements. So this is mostly why I use Photoshop and this is what makes Photoshop so powerful. Aside from Photoshop's incredible digital painting features, it also has vector capability 
giving you the same kind of precision and control of your shapes which you would find in Illustrator, but with far more integrated tools for adding nuances of textures and brushes and such. Now, the risk of illustrating with Photoshop is that it's very possible to spend hours on your artwork only to find that the file is not high enough resolution or it doesn't use colors that, that are gonna print properly. Or you might even find that your file has become so big with all the layers and stuff that it slows your computer down to a crawl. The very capabilities that make Photoshop so powerful seem to be the same things that make it harder to use well. Comparing to Illustrator, there are no file size advantages in Photoshop. The larger you need your illustration to be, the larger the file size, and the more memory your computer will need to handle it. File sizes can be in the hundreds of megabytes or more, and there's a hard limit on how big you can go depending on your machine. For newbies, both Illustrator and Photoshop are gonna take some getting used to. There's a bit of a learning curve. Procreate, on the other hand, is storming onto the scene because of how accessible and easy to use it is. Aside from learning your way around the simple tools and menus, you can almost start drawing in Procreate right away. Just start drawing with your Apple Pencil just like you would on paper. Procreate is powerful because it has uh, many of the same features as Photoshop, including layers and access to thousands of realistic brushes. If digital painting or drawing is your thing, you might only ever need to use Procreate. However, it doesn't have any vector capability, so if you need to make crisp, easily editable shapes, you'll find Procreate to be lacking in this department. Another way in which Procreate falls short is in file management. When you're working on a desktop app like Illustrator or Photoshop, saving and accessing files from your hard drive is fairly straightforward and organizing files is the same as for any of other files on your operating system. In Procreate, however, your files are visible in the gallery, but other than that, not very easily organized especially as the number of files grows over time. Case in point, when I upgraded my iPad last year, I had a really hard time backing up the thousands of Procreate files from my old iPad. I ended up having to buy a Creative Cloud subscription and manually over the course of many days, convert to Photoshop format and then transfer to the cloud. It felt like there was a huge oversight at Procreate headquarters, as though they never thought someone might build up so many drawings over the years and then actually need to get them off of the iPad and get them onto a hard drive or a computer or something like that. Of course, you can export your files to your computer or to the cloud as you go. It is actually, it is quite simple. It just becomes a task when you have to do them kind of all in one giant batch if you, if you don't keep up with it. So for a lot of people, that might be enough and, and, and they'll never have a problem with that. But for all its limitations, I really love Procreate and pretty much do all my sketching in it, as well as some, some hand lettering. I basically use it in the same way I used to use plain paper and a pencil or ink and then scan them into my, my desktop and then get them into Photoshop. So it's just a cleaner, more purely digital way of doing those sketches and those kind of prelimin preliminary inking type things. And it actually saves me quite a few steps. It probably saves me in some projects like many hours. If you want to know more about how Pro Procreate has revolutionized my process, I explain this actually in detail in episode 65, my illustration setup in 2015 versus 2020. Having gone through the basics of each program, here are the biggest things in each app, along with some resources you can follow up with to go deeper. So basically, I'm just gonna point out what you can focus on when you just start to learn, and then I'll give you some links about, you know, what, what, what are some classes I recommend that will help you really go deeper. So what to learn first in Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator's uh, vector graphics program, uh, which as we've already, kind of gone into images are built up using simple shapes. These shapes are, they're created using paths, which are straight or curvy lines kind of connected by points or sometimes these are called nodes. You can use various shape tools like the square or the ellipse, or you can freeform it using the pen tool, kind of 
clicking and dragging to make the shapes you need. The most important tool you'll learn in Illustrator is this tool, the pen tool. It will take some getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be unstoppable. It's a highly useful tool for designers and illustrators alike. And so I just encourage you guys to learn it and learn to love it. Other than the pen tool, you should become familiar with setting up your artboards and the differences between CMYK and RGB color spaces. And of course, working with color via the swatches and the color mixer panels. Lastly, since Illustrator is designed to work with type, become familiar with using the type tool, converting type to paths or outlines, and then using the pen tool and various path operations to manipulate the letters. To get started learning Illustrator, you might as well go real deep and learn the whole darn thing. A great starting point is Illustrator CC Essentials by Daniel Scott on Skillshare. He's an Adobe certified instructor, so you're gonna be in good hands and you're gonna be in good company. I think over 60,000 students have already taken this class and it's well reviewed. There's a ton to learn too with almost eight hours of content. So what to learn first in Adobe Photoshop? Photoshop's a raster or photo and image editing program, strictly speaking, which means images are built up using pixels. Everything you draw or paint in Photoshop is expressed by a collection of pixels, literally picture elements. So when you're looking at them kind of like as a whole image, they just look like a, like a photo or an illustration. But when you zoom in, you'll see a mosaic of, of various pixels of color, different colors and tones. The power of Photoshop for illustrators is in the many digital brushes available and being able to build up your illustration on many different editable layers. The most important thing you can learn in Photoshop is arguably in learning to choose certain brushes and use them well, and then to build up an illustration using layers and skillful technique. I said arguably because one of the biggest strengths in Photoshop happens to be the main strength of its supposed opposite, Adobe Illustrator. I'm talking about the pen tool. If you only wanna make clean shapes with solid areas of color, then forget about Photoshop and become a master at using Illustrator. But if you want to bring the power and control of vector to the freedom and expressiveness of brush strokes and scanned in textures, then this is where Photoshop really shines. We'll get into it more in a sec, but Procreate does most of what Photoshop can do in terms of painting and building up images using digital brushes and layers but only Photoshop gets the combination of using layers, raster brushes, and vector shapes right. When learning Photoshop, you're also gonna to wanna to learn the basics, which are similar to Illustrator. So you wanna become familiar with setting up new files, the differences between CMYK and RGB color spaces, and working with color via the swatches and the color mixer panels. It should be noted that depending on the kind of illustration you hope to do, you're also going to need a graphics tablet of some kind. You can have all the best digital brushes in the world, but they're almost useless without a tablet. If you have an iPad and the Apple Pencil, you can use these as a tablet super easily using an app like Astropad or Apple's own built-in sidecar. I describe how this setup works in my video called My Illustration Setup, which I've linked in the description. To really go deep, you can take another class by Daniel Scott. This one's a nine plus hour doozy called Adobe Photoshop CC Essentials. While this class is heavily biased around the digital photo editing and manipulation parts of Photoshop, many of these skills translate over to digital illustration, especially if you wanna get more into mixed media and collage style work. If you're more interested in a shorter illustration centric class, my new printmaking inspired illustration in Photoshop class might just be up your alley. For a silly but informative little primer on just the pen tool, give Pen Tool Wizard a shot. The great thing with Pen Tool Wizard is it's free to take without a premium Skillshare membership. Okay, now let's get into what to learn first in Procreate. Procreate is also a raster editing program as we've already discussed. And that means your images are gonna be built up using pixels, not vector shapes. 
The defining thing about Procreate is that it was made exclusively for the iPad using the Apple Pencil, which makes it really fun and really easy to just start using right away. Comparing it to Illustrator and Photoshop, it's a lot more like Photoshop. If you were to take Photoshop, strip out the pen tool functionality and turn it into an iPad app, you'd get Procreate. Actually, you'd get uh, Fresco, but that's a totally different story. When you're new to Procreate, I just say start by playing around with the various brushes and getting a feeling for each one. Personally, I don't think many of them are very useful or they won't be until you've learned some of the more basic brushes first. In the Procreate brush library that comes installed on the app, focus on the sketching, inking, and drawing sets to start. Personally, I stick to using the HB and the 6B pencils in the sketching set, and really that's it. I really don't like any of the other sort of default or included brushes that I've played with. They all look very procreate -y. It's kind of hard to explain any other way. That being said, it makes sense to also play around with some of the inking brushes just to get a feeling for controlling variable thickness media, such as the Studio Pen Brush. As for my lettering, I use one of the multi-tonal brushes from Bardo Brush. Other than playing around with brushes, get a, get a feeling for how to build up your illustrations using layers. For instance, you can use one layer for your base sketch, and you can do that in pencil, and then do each color of your illustration on its own layer, and then add line work details over top uh, on a final top layer. So keeping these layers separate is the best way to keep your art editable, which will save you a lot of time if you need to make changes later on. To get started using Procreate, there are tons of great classes out there right now. My favorites are Jerem Vogel's Digital Illustration, Learn to Use Procreate, and Brooke Glazer's Intro to Procreate, Illustrating on the iPad. Now, having learned the basics of each of these apps, hopefully you can feel more confident moving forward and learning them on your own. One of the first questions you might have though is which one to learn first? While I think Procreate is the easiest to learn of them all, I really don't think there's a right order to learn them in. If anything, I think it might make sense to learn them concurrently at the same time. Maybe spend one day or one week learning Illustrator and then dedicate the next day or the next week to immerse yourself in Photoshop and so on. What you might find as you go along is that you'll bounce around between the apps, perhaps between Illustrator and Photoshop or between Photoshop and Procreate, finding for yourself which ones seem to handle certain tasks in your process best. There really is no right answer, and you'll find illustrators who use one or some of these programs in all kinds of different ways and combinations. Part of developing your unique style and technique as an illustrator is based on the way in which you're able to get your tools to do what you want, even if that's by unconventional means and hacks. If you're still stuck and don't know where to start, Brad Woodard's Intro to Digital class for Very, Very Beginners might be perfect for you. Here, Brad Woodard takes you through some, some of the basics using Illustrator and Photoshop. It's a nice way to get to know both of the Adobe programs at the same time. As you move forward and begin learning the digital tools, I wanna to just leave you with three tips, just things to keep in mind, which I think will be helpful. First, remember that being a good illustrator is way more about how you use the tools you have on hand and way less about knowing how to use any specific tools. You can know all the programs through and through and still be a lousy illustrator. At the same time, having some technical mastery on your side is gonna be super helpful. Just like you need to learn how to hold a pencil before you can learn how to write, you should learn the basic illustration tools before learning how to illustrate. Second, consider this. All digital media relates back to traditional media. All digital media in some way emulate the qualities and behaviors of physical media. In part one of the series, I started to talk about the various traditional media, breaking them down into four basic categories, drawing, painting, mixed media or collage, and printmaking. In my style class on Skillshare, I go deeper in how all the various digital programs ultimately relate back to these four traditional media categories. 
For instance, if you want to work in a painterly style, when you know that Procreate and Photoshop basically emulate traditional painting tools, you can save yourself a lot of time and frustration trying to get that, that look you want in Adobe Illustrator. Please be sure to check out the style class if you feel you need more of a review of this relationship between digital and physical media. Discovering this was a huge game changer in my, my own work, for sure. Third, no matter what kind of illustrator you hope to be, even if you want to work in traditional or physical media, you'll still need to learn these programs. If there's one reason, it's because all illustration ends up in digital format and you want to be in control of how your art is digitized. And you may be surprised to learn that many illustrators who work in so-called traditional media actually secretly work digitally after all. I'm all for challenging digital tools, and I'm actually quite jealous in a good way of people who have found a way of incorporating physical media in their work. But almost all artists I admire who do this, they do so with a lot of skill, and that requires knowledge of these digital tools. So this last point actually may seem to contradict my first point where I say the tools kind of don't matter as much as your ability to kind of hack hack the tools to your own advantage. And now I'm saying in this third point that you should actually um, learn the tools no matter what. I think both are tr true if you can hold these two ideas in tension. So you, in your case, may or may not have access or skills to all the programs right now. This should by no means stop you from um, developing as an illustrator in all other ways. At the same time, we can't deny that these are powerful apps and they're, they're popular and industry standard for a reason. They're super useful and when, you're, when you become good at them, they really do help elevate your work. So I just wanted to add that one last little disclaimer there in case um, it seemed like I was contradicting myself. All right, guys, well, that's it for the digital tools. In summary, if you wanna become an illustrator for a living, you need to start by learning the basics of these three basic tools, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, and Procreate. Knowing these technical basics won't make you a great illustrator any more than learning how to hold a pencil will make you a great writer. But they'll, they'll give you the necessary base on which to build more important illustration skills like concept, in composition later. Finally, knowing how these digital tools relate to more traditional tools will further refine your understanding of illustration techniques, both in general and in which ones you should focus on when developing your own style. Of course, everything I'm saying here is just my opinion and just my experience. I've put a lot of time into learning these three tools and not so much in any other options. But what about you guys? What digital tools are you using right now and how are they working out for you? Have I missed something that others should know about, especially coming into illustration in 2021? Please share in the comments. Of course, if you like this video and you found it useful, please like that smash button. All right guys, thank you so much as always for watching. You guys are the best. I always love reading your comments and I'm always grateful for your time, your likes, your subs, and your general kindness. So today we talked about the basic digital tools that don't necessarily make you a better illustrator, but they do give you the basic foundation to build on. In the next video, we'll start exploring some of the higher level illustration skills that will make you a better illustrator. I'm excited about the next one and can't wait to get it up. My name is Tom Froze. You can find me in my classes on tomfroze.com. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, keep asking great questions and keep working them out in your art.